My name's Lizzie Annett and I play Zachary in The Witch of Blood Origin. I'm Zach White and I play Sindral. Hi, I'm Melon Mack. I play Princess Merwin. How you doing? My name is Lawrence Furon and I play Fial in The Witch of Blood Origin. My name is Sophia Brown and I play Ayla and we are talking to Cosmo UK. <laughs> watched the series and read all the scripts but just tried to really embed myself into what Blood Origin meant as a prequel series. Um, yeah, that was my, my sort of journey into it. I was similar as well, so I think I became more of a Witcher nerd after we had already dived into the world of Blood Origin because it kind of unlocked how exciting and um, fascinating and kind of endless this universe was and, yeah. and really kind of inspired me to explore it further. Um, for which I'm really, really grateful. Yeah, I'd be a big fan of the games um, just way before I got cast. And I was a massive fan of the series too. So, I mean, landing the role was kind of, yeah, it's a little bit of, bit of a moment there I had, you know? Because, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I mean, but it's still kind of not real. Yeah, I, I had watched the show before booking the job and then re-watched the show over and over again uh, whilst I was in the prep period. So yeah, fans, both fans of the show. Yeah. Um, I, I did do a bit of horse riding before I started the show, and I do ride a horse in the show, so I suppose that was that was helpful in terms yeah. of uh, getting into the medieval mindset for me. Yeah, I um, I I had been given a, um, a set of runes, which is the magic that's used in the show, by a friend that was uh, preceding probably about a, a year before we were set to film. So I had been in, involved in the in the magic that was used in the show to some degree, but then as you know, we knew we were gonna be filming this, just started kind of pushing that boat and really exploring that. Yeah, we, uh, we, we flew us over about, I, I, I flew over about six weeks before we started a boot camp. You know, we started a boot camp for about two months. So the, yeah, they put us through our paces really. Mm. But I mean, we were great, we were in safe hands because the stunt coordinator, Alan Horn, he was um, he was just uh, incredible. Um, we would like, we try and do the choreography on the days that we weren't shooting, just to make sure that they were literally as tight as they can be. And mm. um, yeah, yeah, it was invaluable, right? Yeah. I think it would have been great if I did go to boot camp, but I because <laughs> I didn't. No, I I wasn't in the boot camp. I had some training, and um, we did some rehearsals for any fights that were involved. But because my character, she lives within the palace, she hasn't needed to fight because there are clans around her who are the protectors. So Merwin has never needed to sort of raise a sword before. So she she didn't have to attend a uh, boot camp and so neither did I, thank goodness. <laughs> All because no, I, I had hardly ever been really around horses, um, never mind, uh, I was going to say sat on one, never mind sat on a horse. But um, so I did, I went to, uh, I think, two lessons. Um, I got up to a trot, um, which was great. But luckily, I got to sort of hold on to the back of someone while they had to do all the hard sort of uh, work. I just got to hold on for dear life and then jump off at the end of it. So it wasn't too taxing. Do you know, they could hear when you were counting down, if we'd say like four, three, two, one, on four, they'd start sort of getting in position or getting ready. I was I was amazed by it. I mean, I know they're such intelligent creatures, but I just didn't realize how much of a, a response they could have into, uh, and action. As soon as action's called, they already knew. They were they were way better than I was on the day. I was so so amazed, and because I was like sat on this horse, going, "Wow, you're amazing!" I'm kind of, <laughs> I, I I was in that world um a lot of the time. Yeah, really spectacular. And yeah, of course, sometimes of course the horse could get spooked by a big firework going off right near its uh, face. Of course, everything was completely safe and. Um, thought through and they had such training so it was fine but you could you could just see I was like it's amazing these creatures that of course if something if there was like a firework going off I would go oh my gosh 
but this horse is just there going I mean I'm acting I'm, I'm not I'm not taking any of that nonsense I was so impressed <laughs> That was difficult. I didn't get too much um, notice yeah. <laughs> to, to, to learn it. So I, I did the best that I could. And I think I really, really loved, I wish that Ayla could have spoken more Elvish in the show, to be honest. Like I, I would have just dived in. I could have, I would have done the whole show in Elvish, to be honest, but um, it was hard. Yeah. It wasn't, there weren't sounds that I was familiar with to lock onto, so. But the whole process was hard and we just dived into it. So yeah. it was a joy to kind of like take it on. Yeah, the pronunciations were really tough. But we had Declan with us the whole time. Yeah. And he's basically yeah. a, a live and breathe encyclopedia. So yeah. of, of that world. So yeah, we were in safe hands. Hi. So Sophia wants the whole thing in Elvish, <laughs> right? That's what you said. Bring yeah. it on. Okay, right. So that's, that's what I want. I want, I want. I want more Elven script. I don't in know. Season two. There's so much to explore in the Witcher universe, and there's yeah. so there's so many incredible characters in in Blood Origin and in the Marquis series. So I think like it's a playground for you know all creatives attached to it. So well, yeah, and, and I think I'd be the, open. Yeah, definitely. And with the conjunction of spheres. Like I'd I want to see how the humans start interacting with the elves and, and what yeah, that will bring, yeah, I mean, and how that cool. kind of that relationship kind of crackles and falls apart. Yeah. Yeah. Gosh, well, I am leaving that completely to the creatives because I have everything that I have dreamed could happen in the Witcher Blood Origin. Any idea that I had has been sort of blown out of the water by what other people have created and thought. So. I just I just can't wait to watch and see see what happens, what unfolds. But it's been a real magic, special time being a part of of this little this series, this four parter that yeah just takes us on a really twisty turny journey, twisty turny journey. I think there's just so many avenues you can go down. We can see what like what sort of monsters are brought to the continent and how they happen and and how the Witcher kind of. Uh, Evolved. Witchers evolve and how the schools are set up and yeah, I mean yeah, definitely season two. Let's go. Nothing irredeemable, irreparable at all. I think we had a, a really lovely and successful time. Yes, we did. There was one day where I got a little bit I'm wearing a very white gown and I got I got a little dirt on it. Um that's not massively wrong. It just needed to be massively clean. <laughs> I also, on one of our last days when we were really getting into doing our own stunts, I got really, really into doing my own stunts and sort of threw myself accidentally into a really huge puddle of water. So I had to be hair dried with a hair dryer. Oh. Um, but beyond that, I think I think we, we came out pretty unscathed, to be honest. Yeah, we're here. <laughs> I spent all my time in Reading, uh, in, a, in Arborfield Studios, which uh, I did very much enjoy, but I know that some of the landscapes that um, are seen are those ones that are in Iceland and all over England, I think, as well. So, my, so I'm going to say Arborfield Studios in Reading was my favourite, because that's where I spent all my time, and I got to know Reading quite well, and I had a lovely time there. So. Reading for me is is top. <laughs> Stay with me, oh lover, my heart's filled with worry. <clears throat> One of my main things that I latch on to is like I always kind of make a playlist for my characters and so with A Ayla, with music being one of like the central um uh themes that she has to communicate, I yeah. think music was an anchor for me so i had a playlist for her and i don't know i think it just we were just trying to find the characters organically all beginnings all ends i didn't do did you do any medieval method acting what does medieval method <laughs> it's acting? it's a good question i i didn't personally i think one of the really wonderful things about these characters is 
although they live in a completely different world and completely different time to the one that, that we know and we exist in, they are so grounded and rooted in a very recognisable sense of reality and their, their humanity I think is really um, is something that everyone will be able to connect with and relate to, mm. all of us living in 2022 I think. No, I think it just we were just trying to find the characters organically. I think through you know getting the fighting foundation down, we were able to build the character on top of that. Mm -hmm. And then um, once you have the foundation, you kind of just f fell into what felt natural yeah. and playing together. I wonder what I was just about to say. I think um, I think you're only really as good as your scene partner, especially when you're you know when you're working so closely with someone the way we were. Mm. So you really kind of um, yeah. It's, it's like when you're working with talented people it makes you better so we just kind of really leaned on each other and the commitment that we both had because we knew we were really up for it and we really really enjoyed what we did um so it was um yeah it was kind of yeah it was kind of easy to kind of just just fall into the characters and fall into the world because you know you know you were there with me the mm. whole time yeah i think we shared we shared a lot of kind of insight and support with each other just organically yeah. actually to be yeah. honest i think it was we were we were all really really very much there for each other every step of the way on that journey and we all kind of kept a really open dialogue about what our experience was as actors and what we were discovering about our characters and I think we just we really uplifted and supported each other in a very natural and organic way which I think was a really a beautiful thing actually. Yeah it felt like everyone was a point of contact to call upon yeah. and ask a question to I and mean, we had an amazing showrunner Declan Devara who gave us so much insight into Hugely, yeah. you know his world that he was trying to create but we also had some amazing people to work with every day that we could really um, get advice or share ideas with mm -hmm. you know get inspired by it so uh, yeah. inspire each other i think i got a message off henry cavill um, about the training and, and, a, and, a, and a, a, a wish you well look now I don't know whether that put more pressure on me <laughs> or anything but uh, yeah I think that was but that was the only yeah the, the, the head honcho gave me a, a bit of a, a shout out alright but uh, yeah. that was it yeah we kind of just and then it was just I think Declan was the main man that we just leaned on yeah. a lot we had a lot of the the lot of the team that did the marquee series also was doing um, Blood Origin so we had like so much so much resource and um, from from those people yeah to yeah help the, us. the crew had already shot um, um, uh, the show and when they started working with us so like yeah it was kind of we were very much in, within the Witcher family yeah so we were looked after in that sense so there was like definitely a huge sort of pass on of this bat on this like with love for sure there was um, a lot of love from the original Witcher team um, passed to us all and so many of the creatives um, who are both all to do with the Witcher world and to do with the our blood origin set 1200 years before um world so there was a big crossover but yeah we didn't um actually I personally didn't chat with anybody I I was um sort of just part of knowing that the team send their love but didn't get into the nitty-gritty because Merwin was too busy doing her own <laughs> strange thing over there. <laughs> I think, I, yeah, I think it's, it's fair to say, I mean, some incredible, incredible talent worked mm. on this show and some, some real kind of real legends of, of the screen. I think it's, it's fair to say that first day on set, meeting Michelle, meeting Lenny, you, you do, you know, it is meeting often, for me it was anyway, some of my childhood heroes. But the most wonderful thing about both of them and about every single person who works on the show is that they're so wonderfully grounded and kind and generous and down to earth and just instantly, I think, made us all feel massively at home. Yeah, I agree, I agree. Uh, I don't think it's possible not to have those little nerves and little butterflies in your stomach but um, I mean just the, the connection we all had as a group anyways was was really welcoming and, and it was so warm to be working with Michelle Yo and Lenny Henry that just became a lot of fun well yes but the thing is is that all the people in the cast are incredibly down-to-earth and such friendly people that like 
uh, like now thinking about it, I'm going, I, it, it's, they, everyone made me feel really uh, good about being there, really like uh, lovely. So I never felt uh, too sort of, I, I hope that I wasn't drooling all the time and being like, oh, uh, <laughs> wow, you're amazing. I mean, I probably was, but um, everyone had such a beautiful person and, and heart that we all felt welcome and, and like, treated like we all deserve to be in the space which I thought is which I think is such an amazing quality to have as a person so I was probably I was in awe of everyone of everyone I thought everyone was so talented but definitely I was pinching myself at the likes of you know Michelle Yeoh and well Lenny Henry I, there were so many people that I was going what's going on in my life right now am I seriously sat here having my um i don't know like my macaroni cheese <laughs> across from these people it's just it was a uh, really a special time in my life and quite like a dream sequence <laughs> i think thanks for watching you can watch the witch of blood origin on netflix <laughs>